hope you had some good lunch and ready for the next two presentations, actually. So the next thing we'll do is a bit of a special thing. It's, um, it's kind of an experiment. It's kind of an idea that we had in the track chairs. So I'm the track chair of site building and case studies for DrupalCon Amsterdam. So together with my colleagues of the other tracks, we decided like um, which sessions that we'll actually present. And I can tell you it's super hard because we get 10 times more session submissions that um, we actually have slots. So what we already knew from the beginning is that there will be a lot of uh, modules about Drupal 8, contrib modules, because all the maintainers, they're heavily working already on porting their modules. So we said, okay, let's put it down and beside of like actually using a lot of spaces, we do one session, which is a double session, uh, which is a contrib status update. So what is what will happen exactly? Because we cannot have everybody present at the same time. So we have eight presenters, and they're actually the module maintainers. So we didn't spare any time to contact all of them to find the time. They all have time during Drupal, DrupalCon. I can tell you that's super hard. So they're all sitting here now, which is super cool. And they will present us some of the most used modules. We have eight module, uh, 11 modules. Um, the most used current Drupal 7 modules, so they most probably will also be really heavy used Drupal 8 modules, and they will tell about the status. Each of them will take 12 minutes, so it's really short, and it's about what is the plan for Drupal 8, are there any changes, are there adaptions, what is the current status, and of course, we're an open source community, so is there anything that you can help? There are a lot of different modules, they have different ideas, what they need, so they will tell you how they need help. There's a short Q&A. We have two microphones, left and right. Um, so if you have a question, please get up and walk there so we have it on audio and we don't lose too much time. And we have like three to four minutes of Q&A per module. If they're a bit faster, we have even more. So if you have a question, ask it. If it's way too long, the people will be here all week so you can ask them later and we can discuss that. There will be a 15 minute break. Um, so because I said it's a two, a double session, so we'll do some break. And you will get the full update on Drupal 8 Contrib. So if you walk out here, you will know which module is where, ready, and when you can start build your Drupal sites. So we start with the first one, that's Drupal 8 Rules. And we'll, the presentation will be done by Josef, and we need to change that. Cool, so hello everybody. Um, this presentation is about rules in Drupal 8. And I'm not really the maintainer of the rules module, nor I'm the creator, um, but we are a whole team, so Fargo. Uh, he's the rules creator, there's Klausi on the team, who is the co-maintainer. Uh, we have Nico Greenauer, who provides design, and I'm responsible for all the other stuff. Um, what is the rules module? Um, so we have a new logo, and um, we like it because we can create custom, uh, custom workflows based on events, conditions, and actions. So it's very util, for example, to send customized emails that the site builders can, act, can actually go into the site and configure small workflows or even set up bigger workflows like redirection, system messages, breadcrumbs. It's very util and it has a lot of integration. So it's based on the Entity API. It integrates with the whole uh, Drupal Commerce ecosystem um, use bulk operations, for example. And this is because of a great architecture. Um, so the entities, they expose the metadata that the rules module then can interact with, um, which is either provided by Drupal Core or by any other module. Um, and the success that we have seen um, makes it happen that it's used on every fifth Drupal site, so more than 250,000 installations. Um, we have hundreds of integration modules available, um, and this is just a few examples of them. So yeah, this is uh, rules uh, from Drupal 5 basically to Drupal 7, and it has been a great success story. And then there was always the big question mark, what are we gonna do for Drupal 8? Because the maintainers, they are pretty busy working on Drupal core, uh, running their own companies, and lots of other stuff. So our predictions were like, it's gonna be hard, but we have lots of great ideas. So what you can expect for rules in Drupal 8 under the hood is 
is all the best practices that you can see in Drupal 8, like evolved developer experience, object orientation, um, all the new patterns, service oriented architecture, and so on. Um, it's obviously based on the plugin system, on the, on the Drupal 8 plugin system now, and it's based on entities and the new type data thing that you, uh, you will all deal with in Drupal 8 as a developer. Um, and another great thing for the developers or even for administrators will be uh, we will be able to deploy configuration or the rules configuration via uh, the configuration management initiative via CMI. So that made us all like, um, like looking forward to it. Um, and we also want to like, the whole idea about getting off the island is also integrating better with other systems. Um, so, so we want to provide more reusable components and work with the others uh, in the community. For example, the context API should be shared with uh, Drupal core and page manager so that we do not have contextual systems uh, duplicated, um, but um, we combine the efforts. Um, also tokens, uh, we have to provide tokens, of course, and they will be similar to entity tokens in Drupal 7, so they are automatically exposed via the, di the type data. Um, then, if you're not working with fields, uh, but you want to have widgets for any data and formatters for any data, you can use the type data widgets and formatters. And then finally, um, the whole rules UI components, they should be, we should be able to integrate them separately. So uh, we can have actions and conditions or the rules data selector. Um, so when we talk about actions and conditions, I could, for example, extend the block configuration user interface and add uh, the possibility to add conditions in the blocks UI. So we could, the site builder could just go into the blocks UI and do like page manager selection rules um, based on the rules UI components. So that we thought like that would be cool. And the data selector, um, as you know it in Drupal 7, um, wouldn't it be nice to use it like for example for tokens or just any other system in Drupal? It doesn't really have to be tight or a dependency of the rules module. So cool. Uh, finally, um, not all of us are into coding, so the site builders, what can they expect? Um, so the administrative user interface should, be all, should all leverage the best practices and the, pat the UI patterns that we have in Drupal 8. Um, there is views bulk operations in a simplified version in core, so we, we can also leverage that to execute uh, rules actions or rules components. And finally, um, I'm very fascinated about this idea. We don't know how it will look like uh, in the UI, but we'll basically get rid of the, the rules conditional, rule set, all of the, the complicated stuff, um, and just allow to nest uh, rules in, inside the other. So inline rules uh, will allow us to build stuff more uh, in a more efficient way. Yeah, hmm. so can we have it now? Um, we thought. It would be nice to have it now, uh, or as early as possible, and this is why we came up with the whole idea, how can we do fundraising? So we did um, a, a Kickstarter-like campaign on Drupal Funders, um, and we also did corporate funding, and now basically, as you can see um, on the slide, we have basically financed the first milestone. So the whole project is budgeted for 1,000 of hours of work, and um, we have sponsors and the, the community fund us do that, and we were pretty successful at that. So we, uh, we raised um, in total about 18,000 euros. But to, to go to the very end, we need 48,000 in total. So it's still a long way to go. Um, and how did we do that? Well, we, we were happy to find all these companies um, support us, and we are still looking for more. Um, and we did so via the Drupal Funders campaign. Um, we produced some cool rulers that you still can get. Um, and we also run sprints on various events in order to, to already get coding. So we're not just um, trying to get funds, but we're also spending the money, money already. Um, and we are developing all on GitHub using the pull request workflows. Um, so it's all shiny and a very cool experience for new contributors. Um, you can join us on the sprints. 
Um, so the current development focus is uh, on porting actions. Um, so this is great for newcomers because it's like uh, very individual tasks um, that allow you to get into the system, um, but you do not have to be an expert at all. Um, on the other hand, we are working on Drupal 8 core uh, integration for the context system and basically finishing the whole milestone one. As an overview, milestone one is almost done and it has also been funded. And we are still looking for funds um, to complete milestones two and three, but we mainly focus on development right now because we do not want always to ask for money without doing something. Um, so milestone two should be finished by the end of the year if we get the funds. If not, it's probably delayed. And then uh, by the beginning of the next year, we should be able to ship the whole uh, rules module uh, at least um, until Drupal 8 is going to be shipped. Yeah, that's like the status update from my side. Um, you can meet us at 1 p.m. on Thursday for an extended buff where you can answer even more questions, but I'm very happy to take some right now. And there's also be a whole sp sprint day on Friday where we focus on um, porting the actions and fixing all the stuff that is left for Milestone 1 and would be happy to get all of you developers um, or just any feedback. Do we have any questions about the rules? No? I got one. Yes. Will it be translatable out of the box? Like messages and stuff? <laughs> Where? As long as configuration is translatable, we should be happy to port the configuration actions. And as, as soon as we have something like that, it will be translatable. Okay. So because we use CMI, we can also translate it. Yay for reusable content. Okay, cool. Um, so if somebody wants to support you with money, who should they contact? So basically you go to the D8 Rules website and we have a contact formula where you just fill in all your data and we will get back to you as soon as possible to, to get the money. <laughs> um, yeah, or just hit me up on the, on the conference. Um, we, we have um, produced, for the, for the Kickstarter campaign, we have produced those rules, and they were really popular. Um, so if you have uh, donated to the project and haven't received your ruler yet, please come to me, and I will make sure that you're served. And uh, one ruler basically is one hour of development. So the agencies, uh, Epico and Strunomics, agreed on 45 euros per hour, which is basically them covering the self-cost in Vienna. So they are not making any money anymore but they allow the developers Fargo and Klausi, who are like top developers, to work on the, uh, on, on the, the D8 rules port in the company time. So if you want to fund uh, an hour of D8 rules work, um, you can get uh, the ruler for 50 euro, which basically includes the ruler plus the, the one hour of work. Cool, yes, and I think like rules is a bit a special case because a lot of other modules depending on it. So that's why, um, so if you, for example, cannot decide about money in your company, but go to the D8 rules, there's a really cool video where people, a lot of module, other modules maintainer explain why they need rules to run their own modules. And that's why also um, rules is really important to be early finished. So to be before we actually, I don't know, do you plan on a, re a release candidate as well? Like when D8 has a release candidate or so? Yeah, we have not really talked about release candidates. Um, but okay. <laughs> so it, we'll it, do it, something, it's just yeah. really good to have it already out before like other modules start to using it because yeah. they depend on it. So, so yeah, um, in order, so because if rules would not be ported early, then we would not have the other the other models would have to wait with their integrations, and we really want to fix that. And for example, we also have ideas around Symphony events, so that that could that could really be important for for the whole ecosystem. Um, when they are possible um, to integrate with events and all that stuff in an easy way, as early as possible. Okay, good. If there are no more questions, questions. Thank you, Josef. And we go to the next one. So I have the rulers <laughs> and there are some stickers. So the next module is panels. Jacob. Hello. Well, that's right. Okay, so it's sort of intimidating coming after rules because we are way less prepared. 
<laughs> so panels, uh, combining forces for good. So panels, as we, uh, as some of you may know, is a fairly monolithic uh, module. Uh, and it comes with uh, C, well, it doesn't come with, but depends on C tools, another somewhat monolithic module. Uh, and the, the process basically is to get rid of that and make panels do what it does well and have it not do anything else. And so one of those, uh, or a few of those issues here, we're working on uh, Page Manager by Tim Plunkett. Uh, basically, uh, Page Manager being moved out of panels and then uh, it's all gonna go into uh, this own module. So as soon as that module's out, we'll be building on top of that. Uh, there was discussion about what's gonna happen with the layout module. So uh, Display Suite and other uh, display um, modules using layouts are going to be uh, needing to combine forces, and that's sort of what we wanna do because right now we have our own layouts in panels D7, and we want to change that. So. Uh, it's right now in contrib, um, and I think it'll stay that way for a while. So uh, we need to get that done. And then we're looking at using uh, Frega's uh, layout plugin, which we'll use uh, to power uh, panels. And then uh, we're working on the remaining C Tools features. Uh, with any luck, C Tools will no longer exist in V8, but uh, we'll see. Uh, we've, we've ripped out a lot, but there is a lot in there. So we'll see. So a few things that we, the, the, the main uh, process right now is we need to get a layout variant. And actually this was, uh, David Snopek has been doing a lot of work in this uh, arena. And he's been doing a lot, of, basically most of the porting um, uh, on the panel side. Uh, so he's made a panels uh, layout variant and it worked. And then D8 sort of upgraded itself a little bit and now it doesn't work, but we're working on fixing it up. So we did have a proof of concept and that part is like, you know, at the 85% the so, uh, side. Uh, once that's done, we're gonna work on implementing a style plugin. So these are the two major components of panels. Um, and then uh, lastly, work on a migration path so you can go from the D7 panels uh, page manager uh, into D8. Uh, as far as everything else in panels, we're trying to keep it as uh, similar to D7 as far as what the end user sees. Uh, so you're not gonna see a whole lot of new features uh, probably from panels uh, quite yet. Uh, the big goal, again, is to try to offload everything, like use the core context system and everything else that core is now providing, uh, we wanna get out of panels and C-tools. So, like I said, does panels lay out? Someone had to have kittens. Um, do they work? Eh, it did, but it doesn't at the moment. However, you can join us and try to help us. Um, uh, Drupal Scotch, uh, we're in there pretty much all the time. And uh, if you uh, ping uh, David, myself, Tim Plunkett, uh, you'll probably get a response. Oh, Eclipse uh, GC, um, so Chris Vandewater has also been doing a bunch of work on this. And there's a few others um, that I don't have to off, off the top of my head. But um, we also have a weekly update meeting we do in IRC. Uh, right now we're looking for a better meeting time, so uh, if you sign up on there, uh, on the Doodle, uh, I believe that's also in the Scotch channel, um, come join us, because unlike some other modules, we're still pretty preliminary in uh, where we're going here with panels. And then of course the issue queue, um, we'll be working on basically all the, uh, the style plugin and the layout plugin will be uh, in there as meta issues and then we'll go through the various parts there, so that's about it for panels. Any questions? All right, thanks. I have one, I have one, I have oh. one, I have uh -oh. one. Yes. Um, there are a lot of modules around panels that like add, add additional features, like panelizer, panels everywhere. Um, are there any plans in that area? So I, not, I don't know how they're doing on those panels, but all I know is that we're not right now planning to bring it in to panels. Um, we, at least right now, the idea is to be really a straight port because we wanna get panels out as soon as possible and we feel like, you know, the more things we add to it, the probably longer it would take. Okay, um, and for the people which, like, I tried Page Manager already out and, it's, and it looks kinda already like panels, so will then panels depend on Page Manager? Correct. And from the UI, what else will it bring? Because there is already 
quite a lot of stuff. So it'll bring like the display variants, um, the, the rule selections, well, not like rules, but basically trying to figure out the different ways to display your content. Um, okay. So that's the part that will go on top of Page Manager. Cool. Yeah. Good. Okay. I think I see one no. more. Yeah. There is. Yeah. I have a question. You, you, you almost gave the answer, but uh, still I'd like to answer the question, usability. Um, I can, I, I know it has to be built, it has to be changed, but um, what do you need to make it happen to make better usability experience for the panels module? So that's a great question. Uh, I was in the panels, uh, the D7 panels this morning, and you know, it admittedly is a pretty horrible yeah. UI, um, but it's very powerful. Um, there has been talk, but we haven't, we, we don't have any funding yet to work on panels. So it's pretty much take the D7 version, D8, make it D8. So I'm hoping that some, uh, that there'll be work in that realm and we could totally use volunteers or other help in that, in that spot. Okay, so thanks. hopefully, I know it's not the answer you want to hear, but I'd love to give you the better one. I, yeah. Is there still something like Spark for Drupal 8? Yeah, so uh, the Spark initiative, uh, it's going and uh, panels is not really a part, I mean, it's sort of a part of it, but not, we haven't really been working on it too much. So um, my guess is that as D8 matures, um, there will be more initiative from those resources uh, to help work on the UX components and potentially uh, panels will be part of that. Cool. So we not only need coders if you are interested in usability, also talk to the guy, these guys because um, panels is used a lot and I can say from my own experience that like for people which never used it before it's really hard but it's super powerful. So if you're interested in helping, uh, yeah, definitely talk to the guys and find them that are around. Yep, uh, I, I'm, there's a few of us around but most of the D8 people are um, not here. But uh, if you find Chris, myself, um, I don't think Damian McKenna is here. Um, but Tim yeah, also. find either one, and Tim isn't here. So find either one of us and we can sort of help steer in the right direction, so thanks. Cool, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Next one up is media. So we have Dave and Janis. Thank you for being here. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Reed, and I'm Giannis. Uh, and we're going to give a quick update on what's happening in the state of Drupal 8 media. Uh, and I want to say, panels, you're not alone uh, in this situation. Um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, everyone kind of is pretty familiar with Drupal 8 media, the media module. Um, it's great, but there's been a lot of like minor issues or major issues. Um, WYSIWYG integration maybe doesn't work properly sometimes or all the time. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we really look forward um, going into Drupal 8, um, fixing these issues from the ground up, not really porting but rewriting from scratch, um, especially since we had other modules like Scald come in the picture that provided an alternate viewpoint on how to do things. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we collaborated with, collaborated with those teams too. Um, so that's kind of where our vision is going. Um, we're kind of uh, joining forces with these teams and working on some common components. And we'll kind of go through these components uh, with you right now. Um, yeah, so first component, component that we're working on is called Entity Browser. It's, uh, if you are familiar with media and how the widget for selecting and uploading media works in 7, it's similar but it's made in a more general way, so it can be used with any entity type. Um, uh, and it's more pluggable, so it's more extensible. Um, so, and can be used in different contexts. It's not suitable only for media, but you can use it just to, to power an entity, re entity reference field for nodes and bring in related articles and stuff like that. Uh, entity browser is still in very early stage of development, so we can only show a mock. Um, but uh, if you go to the project page, uh, there are a few issues open, and uh, there is uh, uh, also discussion about architecture. 
where we go more into detail and you're uh, invited to, to join us. Um, second component is one of two storage components that we're planning to build. It's cool, called Media Entity. Um, and uh, if you're familiar with File Entity in, in D7, it works in a bit different way. It works similar to how SCAL works. Uh, it doesn't use files for everything. Instead of that, it creates um, a, a new entity type that is then used to actually store your media. Um, and as a result of that, uh, it's not necessarily, it's, it's not necessary to store everything um, in file manage table. It have, works heavily with fields. You, basically the idea behind this that you store everything as like standard field API fields and then you have plugins that, that provide you some business logic or validation or metadata that, um, that works with your um, media type. Let's say you have a YouTube video, um, you, you, you just use a text field where you can paste URL in and then you have a pl plugin that validates this and uh, it provides you, I don't know, text, description that can be fetched from YouTube API and things like that. And uh, uh, it's, it's basically already working this, so you can try it, you can test it. And there is an example plugin for YouTube videos that you could look into and play with it. So another kind of major component, uh, the entity browser that was mentioned before is kind of like one of our big parts that we're collaborating on. Uh, the embedding portion is the other big part that we're collaborating on. So this is like where you actually put something in your WYSIWYG. This is like, we want to make sure we get this nailed down right. Uh, and I'm really happy to say that we're, uh, we started this new project called Entity Embed. Um, and we had a really great Summer of Code student, uh, as evidenced by me wearing my Summer of Code shirt today. Um, who worked on this all summer and did a really fantastic job. Um, and so like we're solving all these kind of embedding problems and they're, it's going so well. Uh, and this is pretty much almost complete. Um, so you can have different, you can have multiple buttons, one for embedding content, one for embedding files, uh, one for embedding users if you wanted to do that. Um, so you can have multiple buttons. Uh, it works for all those entity types out of the box uh, with no additional code. Um, and the really cool thing is that it kind of reuses the concept of field formatters uh, that were introduced in Drupal 7. Um, so for instance, if you're embedding a file or an image, you can reuse file and image formatters uh, to display your output. So like here in our screenshot, this is an image fi a field formatter. Um, it's not necessarily attached to a field, it's just it's a file entity. Um, and you can pick how you want to display it and provide options and actually provide alternate and title text too, uh, right there in the screen. Uh, and it all just works all together. Um, and then once you submit this form, it's all serialized into one HTML attribute uh, that uses uh, data attributes, uh, HTML5 attributes. So it's all encapsulated in one nice HTML tag, doesn't use special markup, doesn't use special tokens. It just uses HTML and works. Um, and the other cool thing is that it also supports UUIDs like under the box. If you've selected an entity, it makes sure to embed the UUID of that entity in the HTML tag so that when you deploy your site to production or something, uh, it won't, and if your entity IDs change, uh, but your UUID, unique IDs should not change, it'll still keep working uh, out of the box. Um, so this is a great one to check out. Um, I know some people are actually just using this module in production sites uh, and use on Drupal 8 right now. They're crazy, but I love them. Um, so this is totally usable right now. Uh, it only just maybe breaks when Drupal 8 updates, that's all. Uh, but we're doing our best to keep it up to date. You mentioned Shandan. Yeah, uh, Shandan is, is our uh, Google Summer Code student, so he and deserves a lot of credit. His name is CS underscore Shadow, and if you see him on IRC, say hi. Yeah. He's done a really great job. And so kind of after we developed this entity embed module, we kind of, I kind of realized that, oh, a lot of the stuff that we're doing 
can kind of be reused for things that are not entities. Like if I want to embed a YouTube video and configure how I want it displayed with height and width, like it's kind of the same principle. Um, or if I want to embed a field from the same entity, it's kind of the same principle. I want to pick which field and how to display it. Um, so we're probably going to be expanding this concept a little bit more with like an embed API. Uh, and entity embed will be one version that uh, kind of supports that. So there may be a URL embed uh, for your kind of remote media and YouTube, Vimeo, that kind of stuff. Uh, field embedding, uh, short code for like just kind of, uh, you put in something and it gets output as something else, kind of, it's a, it's a WordPress thing. We wanna make sure we support it. Um, so there's gonna be more coming there. Um, and uh, so media entity was mentioned before. Um, file entity is the, the other kind of storage solution uh, for how we refer to media or files. Um, it's, a, it's a big module in Drupal 7 and we do still plan on porting it. It's been started a, a port right now, um, but we haven't worked on it too much. Um, and we wanna abstract it a little bit more. Like, File Entity does so much right now. It, it exposes the UIs for listing, adding, editing, deleting your files. It makes them fieldable. It adds, like, you can have different file types. You can have audio files, video files. Like, it does a lot of work all in one. So we maybe want to split that up a little bit. Maybe it's just we expose the UI first. That's just what people like out of, out of the box. And if you want fields on your files, you can enable that extra, too. But you don't have to have that out of the box. Um, so we're going to split up, split that up a little bit more. Um, another interesting module that we'd worked on is called fallback formatter. Um, so for any kind of field that has more than one formatter available, you get this fallback formatter. And it says, well, okay, try the default uh, formatter for this field. And if it doesn't return anything, then go try the trimmed formatter and see if that returns something. And if that does return, show that. Um, so it's just a way to provide multiple options. Um, if you are familiar with file entity in Drupal 7, it kind of has this concept, but for fi managing file display, and we wanted to abstract it out. Um, so this is kind of a nice way, like if you had a formatter for audio tag or video tag, and you had a uh, file field that accepted both audio and video, this is the way to make it display f for both things. Because you could say, hey, first try the video formatter. And if it do didn't work, display as an audio field. Uh, and it'll support both things then uh, in the same field. And uh, we also introduced some, uh, some other small things. Um, file image formatters was a small thing I wrote that lets you use image field formatters for your file fields. If you upload images in a file field, you can't output them as an image style. Um, so I wanted to fix that. So that's a nice little reusable thing. Um, and we also want to write a formatter module for an entity reference field that lets you output only a specific field on that referenced entity in a certain formatter. So like, just making sure there's lots of options uh, available. And so kind of the big question then is what happens with the media module itself uh, or the scald module? Uh, you know, these were these large modules trying to do so many things. Um, hopefully now that we split all these things up, we're gonna have a lot more dependencies, but we're in control of those. Um, and it should be a lot more easier to just be like exporting some default configuration to this module and maybe a little bit of glue code to make sure we brings all together and it all works really nicely together. Um, so like media will ship with its own entity browser configuration um, and an entity uh, embed button configuration to make sure that it just works. Um, so that's the plan for those. Uh, we haven't really gotten started with that since we're focused on the components. Um, and if you would like to come help, we have a weekly IRC meeting in the uh, pound Drupal dash media channel. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, join us there. Uh, we do most of our primary development on GitHub uh, in the Drupal-media organization now, but we automatically put that back to Drupal.org when we're done uh, with code too. Uh, we have a group, Drupal group, and we have, we're gonna be at the Sprint on Friday. So, any questions? It was just too good, okay. It was too good. <laughs> so I kind of see the thing happening with, again, that like Dave Reed owns 20% of your modules because you split up media and then there are a lot of modules again. Yeah, it's just a secret ploy for me to be able to write more modules. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the goal, yeah. Okay.
Cool. Um, yeah, I had one question. Like the whole embed, is that depending on CK editor or will it work with any Visivik? Um, so the entity embed stuff, uh, since it's Drupal 8 and Drupal 8 ships with CK editor by default, uh, that's what we integrate with by default. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to shape out with Drupal 8 and alternative WYSIWYG editors, um, but it's theoretical it should support those as well. Uh, just, just it hasn't really happened yet, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, in, the, in the background it works with, in the background it works with text filters. So you could technically manually enter the correct HTML tag and it should be translated. Okay. So you don't need WYSIWYG to actually embed stuff. And another question, maybe that's a political one, but there was once a discussion about Drupal Media in core as an initiative. So it looks like that's all now not, or can you tell us anything about that? Um, as far as we know, there's no official, official Dries sanctioned initiative uh, for media. So we, we've kind of taken it on as our team to, to push, do our best with pushing this forward uh, and organizing ourselves. You know, we would welcome an official initiative. I've kind of told Dries that. So we'll see if it happens, um, and it's totally possible. Like this stuff could be added in Drupal 8.1 or 8.2 down the road too. So that's not out of the option as well. Okay. Yeah, and uh, there were some improvements in D8. Uh, we can now finally upload multiple files in one step. We have a file listing that is there by default. So when you when you upload things into image or file fields, you get a listing, which is a view, and you can change it, of course. And you can embed images into WYSIWYG by default, just with core. So we only need to handle embedding for other types of media. OK, cool. There is a question. Yeah, I was just wondering. Uh, the rules module had an estimate of getting it ready end of 2014 maybe beginning 2015. Do you have an estimate when you think media will be ported? Um, I will just say when it's done, because we don't have any funding, and it's all volunteer basis right now. So, so people fund them. Yeah, it, we would accept funding, yes. And we can probably, we, I mean, we've already finished one major component with Entity Embed, so like we're making a good progress. Um, I, I would hope that we have a usable set of stuff by the time Drupal 8's released, so. I think that's the same with rules. It's like the more the web evolves, we have more and more media, we have more and more embeds from other sites. So I think that's definitely something we can focus on. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of trying to solve some really hard problems with embedding and the entity selection. It's like these are modules that, are, that have at least 10 different solutions right now in Drupal 7. So like as soon as we can get these out and workable now, we can get more people using them and have them be like the officially sanctioned one. Uh, which I think will be a lot of progress in moving that forward into core. So, yep. Cool. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So, will you do it? I don't care. You can do. <laughs> okay, next one um, Search API. Hello, um, I'm Thomas Seidel, aka Drunk Monkey, and and a maintainer of the Search API module. Um, so I'm gonna talk about its uh, Drupal 8 version now. Um, regarding the changes compared to Drupal 7, a lot of this is still in discussion, so if you're interested, um, please look at that meta issue and find child issues, create your own, and just discuss with us um, in what direction we should take this um, Drupal 8 port. Uh, one decision we have already made is that the basic architecture will remain unchanged. So if you've used um, Search API in the past, uh, you'll still have search, a search servers, search indexes, m much of the same configuration in both, and um, yeah, creating searches on the indexes. But um, we focused on a lot of the problems we um, spotted in the Drupal 7 version. Um, a lot of them relating to flexibility, just problems that we um, really didn't think of when creating the search API in the first place, and then which um, turned out to be pretty hard to solve in Drupal 7 with the fixed architecture. So um, we're doing a lot there to improve the Drupal 8 version to be able to solve all these problems um, more cleanly, which we identified in Drupal 7. And on the other hand, user experience, because um, usability was also um, pretty poor. 
or at least uh, f especially for new users, and a lot of them had problems just figuring out how to do the, how to come up with the basic search and what the each setting means. And there was a lot, were, were a lot of issues regarding wrong configuration, so we also tried to solve that um, in Drupal 8 by providing better guidance to users. Um, so going a bit into detail about flexibility improvements, one large improvement there is that uh, search indexes will now not be restricted to a single item type. So previously in Drupal 7, you could only have an uh, index with nodes or with user profiles or with whatever else. But now in Drupal 8, you can just create one index which has all the item types you need in searches. And with that, you have vastly better um, support of creating a unified site search, which is something that a lot of people need but was very hard to do in Drupal, 8, uh, Drupal 7. So I think that's one of the really great um, improvements in Drupal 8. Um, then under the hood, we've ch just uh, made a lot of more um, components pluggable, so things that were previously hard-coded can now be swapped out for um, specific use cases, and also things that weren't previously configurable are configurable now. For example, here we have um, the item types on the index can be configured more, so when you say um, you want to an index to contain nodes, then you can right away say which content type should be uh, indexed from the nodes. And this is uh, also something a lot of people requested in Drupal 7 and was hard to solve there. So this is also now uh, possible much more cleanly and should also um, provide uh, yeah, great improvement for a lot of sites. Regarding user experience, um, there was just a lot of um, work done on the user interfaces, just making the, all the pages more, cle uh, more cleaner and um, easier to use, easier to understand. And of course, also leveraging all the core improvements here. We are uh, talking about revising some of the ter terminology and already did, so, did it so that we better convey the meaning behind some of the special terms used in the search API, also, pro also to hopefully help uh, new users to understand what we mean with the different um, terms and components. Uh, something that we've planned is doing a simplified user interface and I'd really love to see that, so that if you're a new user, you can just, um, you have just uh, no uh, access right away to the advanced user interface as we have it now, and just maybe a simple wizard for setting up a search with uh, which um, uses default value, uh, sensible default values for the more complex um, settings, and just allows you to basically do um, config configure a few searches and uh, only then allows you to um, switch on the advanced user interface if you have really a use case for that and need to configure it more, but otherwise hide the flexibility for new users. And of course, we also plan to uh, support the tour module, which is now in core, which should hopefully also help uh, new users get started. Um, so that sounds all good. How are we doing with that? Uh, well, a lot of the existing functionality from the framework from the framework itself is ported, or really all of it. Um, but uh, other than a few backends, so database backend and Solar are also ported, and we have a, we've had a Google Sum of Code student work on Elasticsearch. And a bit of diffuse integration is uh, already finished, but not much more uh, regarding um, contrib modules. So there's still a lot of work to do and a lot of the improvements we've already um, planned to do in the Drupal 8 version need to be implemented as well. So um, we're still pretty far from, while it is already usable and I've heard just yesterday that someone is using it on production with 20,000 nodes, lunatic. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's very much usable already, but and still a lot of uh, way to go until we um, even get an alpha or then even a release. We are working the whole week here at DrupalCon on it, and we are also having a Birds of a Feather session tomorrow at 10.45, so if you want to hear this in more detail, provide your own opinion, discuss things, then please also come there. Um, 
And yeah, otherwise, if you're interested in Search API and interested in seeing its Drupal 8 version soon, then um, there are many ways to help with that. First off, of course, if you're a developer, then uh, we're sure um, to have some tasks for your level, even if you're new to the Search API. It's a great way to get started because um, we'll give you just, uh, we'll explain things to you and then get you started with some easy tasks and um, yeah, it's great for getting your feeling of the Search API code. In Amsterdam, you can find the Koa launch, otherwise contact us, we have an IRC channel where we are um, discussing things and also weekly hangout meeting. Uh, otherwise, if you're not a programmer, you're still uh, welcome to join the discussions and the issues. Just provide your own opinions, your own use cases, your own problems with the search API in Triple Seven. What we could, um, what we could improve and uh, make easier to do in Triple Eight. And finally, especially for companies, if you're using the search API and are planning to use its uh, Triple Eight version soon, it would be uh, really great to get some funding, because uh, currently we are almost completely unfunded. And uh, especially for me, it's uh, getting hard to get enough work, uh, working time to bring this forward and keep the momentum. And also, um, getting funding for sprints is always a great way to push uh, the project forward. So um, if you want to do that, then please contact me, and we're sure to um, find some way how you can contribute um, in a way that makes sense to you. Thank you. Any questions already? Yeah, just go to the microphone. You have time. Hi, uh, I read some discussions about uh, Apache Solar in the in the in Drupal 8. You were talking about the Search API based model, but the, uh, about the Apache Solar model and the Search API Solar integration. They are merging, what exactly will happen? Uh, exactly, so what will happen is basically that there will only be a search API based um, solar module in Drupal 8. We'll merge the two modules and um, support all the use cases that either of them uh, supported in Drupal 7 with the new search API solar module. So this is also, of course, a great improvement for users who were previously confused with the two uh, modules and which of those uh, should be used and will just try to make a uh, one kick-ass solar module in Drupal 8 that, yeah, is the best for everyone. Thanks. <coughs> so what about, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, go. So about backends, um, we have talked about solar. Is there other backends available? Um, yeah, database backend is also already ported and working quite well. And Elasticsearch was partially ported. I don't know about uh, the other modules, but I don't think any of those have started porting yet. But of course, I expect that most of those that are available in Drupal 7 will also be available in Drupal 8 at some point. Okay. And finally, uh, what about the facets? <laughs> um, Bram Goffings uh, is uh, coming up soon, and he is already volunt no. uh, We don't know yet. Um, so, uh, but we'll probably discussing that tomorrow too. So, if you are, uh, if you have about two months free time and no facet API, then please, will be eternally grateful. And otherwise, yeah, we'll just figure out what to do with that. What about multilingual search? Sorry. What about multilingual search? Oh, um, yeah. So, since uh, uh, translations are pretty. Uh, pretty well supported in Drupal 8 core now. We figured that this needs to be supported in Search API 2. So um, what you had previously with the Search API entity translations module is now um, completely baked into the Search API framework already. So by default, you'll um, have all of the translations of entities indexed right away. You can search through them um, based on the language and we'll also plan to support that way better in solar too in some way so that if you have a multilingual site um, the solar settings will make sense uh, there too. Great. Good. I got one question. Um, so there will still be search in Drupal 8 core and um, when I enable search API will it automatically replace it or will the URLs change? How is the idea there? Um, the 
I think the approach here will be the same as in Drupal 7. It will more or less ignore core search, so you should probably disable it if you're using search API, but there is no plans on doing some automatic replacement or some integration there. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas. So I think... And I actually think he mentioned a really interesting point. So if you are currently using Drupal 7 modules and you have a really big pain point with Search API or whatever other modules, go to the maintainers and talk to them. Um, because most of the stuff anybody, any, anyway has to be rewritten. So uh, why not write it in a better way? So I think if you have any idea of any modules, talk to these people right now is the time. Because probably in a year, for the next three years, there will be no upgrade anymore and you will be stuck with that functionality. So now is the time to talk to the people and convince them, with a beer or not, however you want to do that, um, to, to change their functionality. Good. The next one, before we make a short break, is commerce. Thank you. Okay, so I'm Bon Jovanovic, Bon Z on Drupal.org, and I am the development lead for Commerce to the Tax. I work for Commerce Guys, and I'm paid to work on Drupal Commerce full time. Three years ago, we released Commerce 1.0 back at DrupalCon London, and in that time, we have reached almost 50,000 live installs. And uh, the reason why Commerce became so popular is because we built it from scratch on the new technologies that Drupal 7 gave us. And by doing that, we became immediately familiar to anyone who was already familiar with Drupal 7 itself. We were then able to take these concepts and push it further in ways that later became standard, for example, by using views for admin listings. So in order to replicate that success, we must once again start from scratch completely and build something new for Drupal 8 and the completely new technologies that it itself brings. So we are starting from scratch, we are taking into account every single angry comment you ever posted to the commerce issue queue, any feedback we might have received or experiences we had dealing with our own projects. And of course, uh, one of the big themes of Drupal 8 is getting off the island. So we found a boat of our own and we are doing the same. And we are doing that by taking the core Drupal Commerce functionality and releasing it as completely separate standalone PHP components. Because when you think about it, currencies and prices and taxes and addressing and payments and so much more, none of this is specifically tied to Drupal. And even if we use entities for data storage and other Drupal APIs, that doesn't mean that there is no separate core. Uh, so that's why we've started developing the libraries, and that has been our primary focus in the past two months, uh, which is how, much, how long we've been developing all this. So the first library that we've created is called Internationalization, and it significantly improves on currency handling and currency formatting. Back with Commerce One Attacks, we shipped with a completely static currency list, uh, which was not good because it had holes and it got deprecated uh, or outdated pretty quickly because currencies change or inflation eats the subunits. Uh, we also tied formatting to the currency itself, which meant that one currency could only have one set of formatting rules, rules such as where does the symbol go and which uh, grouping and decimal separators do we use and so on. And when you look at my numbers, when you look at three different euro amounts, you will realize that they are all different. The first one is how it will look in France, the second one is how it looks in Germany, and the third one is how it looks in the UK. So we realized that this time around we needed to do currency formatting per locale. So ideally, we wanted to have a way to automatically generate the currency list and to automatically gather the formatting information. And we managed to find that in the CLDR project. So the CLDR project is a repository of data that's assembled by Apple and Google and Microsoft and other big players. It's used pretty much everywhere. Drupal 8 uses it for its currency list, for its country list. 
uh, and we use it for currencies. So it gives us a set of all currencies in the world, and it gives us translations for 250 locales, which is pretty much every single language and country you can think of. Uh, so that means that for every country, for every locale, we have the translated currency name and even the translated currency symbol and the formatting data for all of those countries, which is really something. Uh, and on the Drupal side, we import the currencies into config entities and automatically create translations for all of the languages that you have defined on your site. And when you add a new language, we will uh, automatically import the translations for that as well. So we use that to create a really great number formatter that replicates what the PHP ex internationalization extension does. We couldn't depend on it because it's not present on most PHP installs. Uh, but we managed to replicate it using uh, the data found here. And so we even support uh, cases such as Arabic or Hindu numerals. So if you're doing an Arabic site, they really expect the prices to be shown using their own numbers. That wasn't possible before, it's possible now. So all things considered, we are significantly uh, better equipped to handle multilingual and multi-market websites. Now Symfony has a library of their own called internationalization, which limited itself only to English. But since we published this, they expressed the desire to change that. So by Symfony 2.7, uh, all of this functionality will be in Symfony itself, which is a really nice example of cross-project collaboration. Uh, and it's been our first success. Uh, the second library we made is called Addressing. Uh, we, we previously had Address Field, which which was pretty okay, uh, but the problem was that it didn't have predefined uh, formats for many countries. So um, things such as which fields are used, how are they, are they required, uh, how is the zip code formatted, what are the subdivisions, for example, US states that are used. All of that data needed to be collected manually, and because of that, we didn't have support for that many countries out of the box. Uh, however, Google has created a great new da data set in the meantime that they use for Android. Uh, and since it's freely available, we are actually parsing that and including it in our library. So that means that for commerce to the text, we have predefined address formats for 200 countries and we have predefined subdivisions for 40 countries, including their translations. And we use that data uh, to generate the address forms, to, to, to generate the uh, shipping slips uh, and uh, everything else that needs to be done. And once again, address field pulls in this library, defines the config entities uh, which hold the data and then uses that to generate uh, the Drupal forms. And this library has also been very successful for us uh, in the sense that we've been trending on GitHub as the most popular repository for a few days. Uh, the, the new week came around, so that's now gone, but we enjoyed our five minutes of glory. Uh, so th those were the first two libraries, and now on, at DrupalCon we are focusing on releasing the second two. The first one introduces the concept of zones, uh, so you can define, for example, a zone that's called the European Union, has a set of countries, or a zone that's called Germany and France, or a zone that's called uh, German VAT, so for example, German VAT is used in Germany and five Austrian zip codes, so you can define that. And the point of this is to define the zones that are used for taxes or shipping and uh, use it to significantly decrease the number of conditions that you need to have in a rule or a hook uh, to do your own thing, so it really simplifies those use cases. That's the first one. The second one that we are building is called tax. Uh, and this is our most ambitious one. Uh, we want to significantly improve the commerce support for taxes, especially bringing in the improvements that we've had in uh, modules such as Commerce VAT and Commerce EU VAT. So this module will have predefined tax rates for all of Europe, for Canada, for Australia, whatever we can gather. There is no external source for this, so we're going to have to do it ourselves. And then we're going to optimize for all of the common use cases. So for example, selling digital products and the way taxes are handled there versus shippable ones. Uh, Canada taxes, which can be added together and have some different rules for determining the place of supply and so on. Um, in general, our uh, taxes requirements are 
twice more complex than they were in Wondotex, and we are really looking forward to making this easier on you by handling the tricky parts ourselves. So we, we made all of these cool libraries, but you came here to hear about the module. The module is uh, being developed on GitHub, uh, primarily because we are using Travis, the build bot, to run our own tests, and Drupal.org bots don't support Composer. Uh, so uh, that's why we needed to go to GitHub and we really enjoy pull requests. Uh, so that we will keep using GitHub up until we reach a beta early next year and by that time uh, we should be ready to get back to Drupal.org and we are mirroring all of the commits. So you can go there and send a pull request. We are still using the Drupal.org issue queue so if you want to start working on a task this week you can go to our normal Drupal.org issue queue uh, and start looking at that. Uh, the future is bright and we have many, many plans. So for example, we are killing the concept of product displays. You now only have products and the products can exist in a hierarchy if you want. So you can see an example of one where you have a hierarchy for uh, that's based on colors and sizes. We are also looking into completely recreating the payment API to be more powerful and to make payment modules much, much easier to implement. We are looking into the OmniPay library as a base for this effort, but uh, I'm not yet sure how that will turn out. We'll see. Uh, I'm definitely interested, though. Uh, I really want to credit all of the awesome contributors that we've had in the previous two months. Uh, so, and <laughs> while they can still fit on one slide, of course. So, Yale Becker has had 26 commits added to commerce, Pedro Cambra 10, and these guys have commits that uh, have more than 3,000 lines of code usually, so it, even the, the number itself is not the most impressive thing. Josh Taylor has had 10, Matt Clayman 6, Andy Giles 1, David Kitchen 1. Uh, so we've had uh, all six very persistent non-commerce guys, contributors working day by day on making commerce to attacks a reality and I'm really thrilled to see that and I'm hoping that the number of them will increase more and more. So uh, you can install commerce today, you can create a product, uh, list it, uh, do other basic things and the reason why we are making so much progress is because of them. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we have a BOF tomorrow at 1045 Emerald Lounge E. I'm really looking forward to hearing all of your stories, use cases, frustrations, so we can make sure we do it right this time. Uh, so whatever you have to discuss uh, then is a great moment. We also do office hours every Thursday on IRC. Uh, so 3 p.m. GMT plus two, which is most of Europe. Uh, come to IRC and start discussing or grab an issue. We will be happy to guide you and we have issues of all sizes from two hours to two months. Choose your poison. And that's it for me. Thank you, Boyan. Any questions about commerce? Yeah. We've heard with rules that rules is um, not yet ready, but should be for a lot of content modules based on rules such as commerce. So where is commerce regarding not those architectural um, founding things, but really usable, um, being a usable module? I would say early 2015 at the best. Uh, I'm aiming to have a release around middle 2015 and we'll see how that goes and whether a beta happens in February or April. It, 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 it's really too early to tell, but we are doing monthly blog post updates that should provide a, a better estimate as we go along. Um, I was curious, since you're moving toward components, know if you consider Cilius as a possible project to, you know, kind of use or collaborate with. Yeah, we've had a lot of contact with Cilius. They're great guys. Uh, I'm really hoping that they will actually use our addressing code. Uh, and we've also been in contact with the Sonata guys uh, who are also interested in our taxes. So there will be collaboration. I'm not yet sure who will take what. Uh, Cilius doesn't really have reusable components at the moment. They're very basic, but we are uh, actively talking with them uh, and to them about changing that. Okay. So, yeah. 
Um, is there going to be uh, better support in the roadmap um, uh, in Drupal 8 for a two-way marketplace in commerce? Yes, we now have a commerce store entity by default that should allow us that, and uh, it should provide a very good basis for a marketplace module. Uh, we still don't know how much functionality will be in commerce itself, uh, but definitely more than there was before. Thank you. I really like that you tried to like get off the island, um, and I'm curious, um, obviously, as the rules guys, uh, we are interested in what is your take on the functionality that you currently implement using rules? Are you planning to do that with rules or like maybe something else? Yeah, so from a developer standpoint, I, I would say rules is more of a nice to have, uh, but from a site builder standpoint, it's, it's definitely a must have. Uh, we are working on being able to use commerce without rules at the moment, but I'm really following rules development closely. Uh, and uh, we'll then see. Uh, my current plan is to just emit uh, events by default and have rules uh, be one of the listeners, uh, allowing people to use or not use rules as they choose, but assuming that most people will still want to use rules. Okay, okay. that's it. Cool. Thanks, Boyan. So we're actually a bit ahead of time, so I think what we can do, we do the next three parts and then we're actually probably finished before the next session starts. So we won't even use the two sessions, so in case you want to see the next one, which only starts in half an hour, uh, you can still do that. And we do uh, now display suite, then we have simple news and actually four more modules all in one token redirect and all these things. But now, display suite. Hi. So. Um Display Suites. So uh, we have a small team working on, on Display Suites on Drupal 7 and before. First of all, you have Christoph Swantel. He started the module a few years ago in Drupal 6, and he's still doing some work on it uh, on Drupal 8 now. And my name is Bram, I'm Spalicious. Um I started working on uh, the Drupal 7 module as part of my internship with Crimson, now Wunderkraut. And uh, at the moment, uh, I'm mainly focused on the Drupal 8 support, and I've built most part of it. And then we have Chris. Uh, he's the guy that suffers uh, the Drupal 7, uh, Drupal 6, uh, uh, so suffers from the Drupal 6 port, so he maintains it. Uh, but he's not going to add new features. He's just fixing critical bugs if they occur. And then you have others that just made small patches that we committed. I love those people, by the way. So. Uh, when we started with the um, port for Drupal uh, 8, we didn't want to change a lot in the user interface because after the rebuild, the 7.2 rebuild, we got some nice comments from people that they liked the new interface and we would, I, we plan to keep it for, for Drupal 8. So the, mainly, uh, the main focus for us was um, rebuilding a display suite uh, on the new architecture of the Drupal 8 but keep the UI as simple as possible. But as this is a side builder track, I'm going to focus on the things that has changed. Has changed. Um, for example, oh, this is not clear, but um, most people know the PHP code field. You could uh, inject PHP um, from the UI by just entering some lines, say I want it on the notes on that bundle, and then you had some nice injected PHP in your uh, display. But, as we all know, uh, this is good. Why? Because it's fast. It's good for fast snippets and you don't need a module. But the evil part is way more important. It's not secure. It's not secure. It's not secure. And it's misused a lot. I have many bug reports in the issue queue about people that are doing crazy stuff with that code field. And uh, Drupal 8 decided to remove the PHP filter from core, so, so did we. So we removed the PHP filter field. Yeah, some may hate me, some may love me now, but I don't care. Um, but we replaced it with a token field. So it's the same functionality as the Drupal 7 code field, but without the PHP part. Um, to make up with the people that hate me now, I rebuilt the DS fields uh, functions. I made them plugins. It's easier for developers to, to implement a plugin. Um, 
and it's also easier for new people to 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 learn how they how they have to build the DS field themselves. There's drudge integration. I don't know if it's work if it works at the moment because everything is broken at the moment. But um, it worked last week, and then you can just say, say drudge create DS field, and then it creates uh, a class for you, and you just have to implement a random method. So that's almost as easy as going to the field and do some dirty hacks in there. Uh, tutorials will follow when the part is done and when I have more time. So a new feature I added, it was mainly f as, a, as a joke the first time, but it, it can be really handy, is a, a copy of a dis display suite field. So I made a display suite field that can copy a display suite field. So you can have two times the same fields on your, on your display without uh, having yeah, two functions that do that point to the same uh, code. Um, it's kind of awesome, but uh, at the moment it's only limited to display suite fields. It would be better if we also could copy um, uh, normal fields of other, other stuff, so you can have like one code function that you can reuse, put some settings in it, and it does other stuff. Um, but yeah, I need some help with the with other field types because it's really complicated and you get in, into loops and stuff like that. Um, some may know the dynamic field. It was based on Ctools Magic in Drupal 7. Um, as there is no Ctools yet in Drupal 8 and maybe there will not be Ctools in Drupal 8. So there is no replacement in Drupal 8 yet. So if you, if you uh, use this feature a lot, um, please tell me so I know there's interest in it. So I know, so I know there is interesting uh, interested in in the feature. So I can um, see if I can do something about it. But I'm not sure if there will be a dynamic field in Drupal 8. So we have like three uh, field types now. We have the block fields, a token fields, and the create a copy of a display suite field. Those are pluggable. This means that anyone can create their own type of pluggable UI fields. Um, you can extend my base class, so it's, you have, don't have to implement the entire form. It's pretty easy, and there will, be, uh, there will be tutorials how you can do that for developers. So side builders, if you can't do it yourself, just push your developer and say, I need this, I need this, I need this, and then they will build it for you. Um, and then we have a comparison between the Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 layout, I, UI interface. It's kind of similar. Except uh, the view mode tab that was visible in Drupal 7 has disappeared from the Drupal 8 version. Why? There are no more view modes? No, it's not true. They are still alive, but they are moved to core. So we don't have to uh, maintain that code anymore, which is good. Um, then we have the field templates. That was a, a feature that is uh, that's almost the most popular feature of Display Suite. And there is the famous expert field template. I think I have more than 20 um, issue reports or feature requests that want to extend the expert field template because it's not expert enough. Um, I'm sick of it, so I decided to feature freeze the expert templates in, um, in Drupal 7. This is now in dev and I'm not going to add any more features to it. But for Drupal 8, I made the templates um, pluggable. So everyone can add new field templates by implementing three days ago, but it's broken now. So I'll fix it, like a lot of stuff I'm going to fix this week. But uh, you can try it soon. So like I said, there are no big UI changes. This is pretty much the same as before. Um, the thing that has changed in the back end is that the templates are converted to Twig. I'm not a team expert, so I can use some teamer to uh, review the templates and optimize where needed. Um, yeah. So what is the current status of Display Suite? It was functional last week. <laughs> Core changes fast. 80% um, of the work is already done. So please, please, please give it a try in the near future. But do not use it in production yet. I got several mails this week from people that are, that are trying to use it in production. 
we will rewrite the storage of display suite. That's the 20% that has to be done. So all your settings will be lost when you use it in production and you update to a new version of display suite. Just a note, I'm going to put like a big warning on the project page, but. So are there other layout modules ready? Apparently pa panels is busy, so, um, but it will not be finished before 2050, mid 2050, I don't know. This proceed will be done before the end of the year. I promise that. Um, yay. <laughs> but if core changes in 2015 and I have to redo my work, uh, that's not my problem, <laughs> just to be sure. So you can contribute. First of all, you can code. You ha can help us find bugs. You can help us fix bugs. Um, if you have a new feature, you can build it. If it's, if I think it's it's usable for for everyone, I'll put it into display suites. If it's some nice extra, I can make a link on the display suites page to link to your module, uh, so others can find it. Um, I don't have a lot of time to work on display suites, so if there are people that need a stable display suite like before November, then you have to pay me, sorry. Um, if, you, if you want it before 2015, I'll do it for free, so yeah. So if you want um, specific features, uh, yeah, just talk to me and we'll see what I can do. So that's it for me. This place we eat. When, um, when the panels guys were on stage, they said they were still um, wondering how to tackle the layouts. Um, because in Drupal 7, they were based on C tools, so they were interchangeable. You could use panels layouts in Display Suite and vice versa. Uh, I've noticed you have already finished the layouts. So how did you go about it? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, I, this is a, just a straight port from the display suite uh, layouts in Drupal 7. I started to, um, to try uh, make reusable layouts, but it's very, very, very hard. I had several discussions with several people how to do it. At the moment, there isn't a solution yet, so uh, I just made my solution. Um, when we figure something out, we will combine them. It will not break your settings or stuff like that. Um, but just to be sure, I just ported uh, the Drupal 7 uh, layouts. Um, I hope we can figure something out with panels. If not, we have to live with uh, separate layouts for panels and display suites. And maybe uh, I can include some panel layouts with some tweaks and vice versa but I hope we can manage to, uh, to combine them. Okay, cool, thank you. So, the next one sounds a bit spooky. Um, it's um, Bear Deer, so we figured out there are a lot of smaller modules that we all use in Drupal 8 and uh, Drupal 7. So that's redirect, global redirect, token, and path auto. And um, Sasha said, okay, I'm gonna do a presentation about all of them and give you a short update of them. Um, okay, yes, so I guess all of you know those modules and use them on your sites. So I'm not going to talk much about what they do. Redirect allows you to create redirect from one site to, from one URL to another. For example, it's mostly used when you use pass auto and change your node title then Redirect makes sure that all the links still work. Drop Redirect allows to set up some settings and then it, for example, makes sure that you are always on a URL alias. So when you go to node slash seven, it redirects you to the right alias. Um, the token module adds two things and one, it adds a lot more tokens than Drupal core has, like tokens for fields and menus and a lot more. And it has a token UI and pass auto allows to set 
allows you to set up rules on how to automatically create aliases for your news, for example, or other types of content. So about me, my name is Sascha Grassenbacher. My Drupal username is Berdir. I work at MT Systems in Switzerland. I'm a core contributor and Entity Field API maintainer. And I'm not a maintainer of any of those modules, but I'm involved in many Drupal 8 country ports and including those. So um, about the changes, there are a lot of API changes and core changed a lot. So redirect and pass out though had to change a lot and the way they have to integrate into core changed a lot. And they're being updated, improved and rewritten in Drupal 8, wise, Drupal 8 ways, for example, using services instead of functions so that certain parts can be replaced if you don't like how it works. Um, and the, however, the look and feel, the user interface is mostly the same. Most of those, the user interfaces have just been ported directly from Drupal 7, how they work in Drupal 7. So the status in general, all of those modules are kind of working. Um, they have functional ports, not all features are there yet, um, but I'm keeping them up and running whenever I can. So starting with Global Redirect, um, as I said, the basic functionality is working. You can enable it and set it up and enable the options you want, and it's going to do those redirects. Um, it's already on Drupal.org, so if you want to try it out, go to the project page and give it a try. Um, there are some issues with language prefixes, so if you have a multilingual site, be careful. There have been issues in Drupal 7, and there are new issues in Drupal 8 that we haven't figured out yet how to fix. And there's a topic that always has been the idea to merge them, merge the module into a direct. Um, that did not happen yet, but it's still an option for Drupal 8, I think. Um, so this doesn't look like up to date. I need to get back to this. Um, the redirect module. So again, it's basically working. It's integrated into PassAuto and the manual UI for creating redirects is there. You can set up your redirects as you were used to it in Drupal 7. Um, it's currently on our GitHub repository, so you can get it from there. Um, the, there are a few things missing. For example, we're not, using, not yet using views for the UIs, so the UIs are currently very, busy, very simple. They have no paging, no filtering, and all that stuff that we use from Drupal 7, that's not yet there. We will add that when we switch to using views for the UIs. And there are also some additional features and some of those various alter hooks and extension points are not there yet. So that's how the module looks at the moment in Drupal 8. There's the user interface for adding redirect. You can enter the from URL that you want to get redirected and to where you want to redirect to. That's basically most of the user interface you can see in this module. And then you have the token module. As I said, it has two functions. One is providing a ton of additional tokens that Drupal core doesn't have, like for fields, for menus, and complicated tokens or extend flexible tokens like combining stuff into combining arrays and split converting them into strings and so on. So a lot of those are working and can be used already. They often break because they're deeply integrated into core APIs. So every time those parts slightly change, then it falls apart. But I'm trying to keep it up to date and fixing those things. Um, the fill tokens are very limited at the moment. So you can't, they are show up in user interface. You can use them, but they don't have any references yet. And you don't can, can't control the properties and uh, view them in a different way you just get the default output for those field values, basically. Um, this is also on a GitHub repository at the moment. You can get it from there and try it out. The second part of the module is the token UI that people try to get into Drupal core. That didn't happen yet, so it has to stay in the module for now. Um, it has been slightly updated to use the new jQuery, jQuery UI 
that's now in Drupal core. Um, and then you displace, and then you overlay stuff there. But other than that, there weren't many changes. Um, there's quite a lot to do in that module, improving the tokens, adding more test coverage, so we know when things break, and adding more tokens, and so on. And then you have the last one of those modules. Oh, I forgot, sorry. Some of those screenshots moved around. Um, that's how the user interface looks at the moment. There's that well-known, you can embed it directly into the page, or you can have that pop-up, and that's how that pop-up looks at the moment. So you get your tokens, and you can um, go into that table and click down and select the token you want. It has the same problems and limitations as it has in Drupal 7, like it explodes when you have a lot of fields. That has no making more, it's more Drupal 8-like, so removing the hooks to integ for integration and instead using plugins to make it easier to extend, to make it more flexible so that certain entity types can have certain logic in there and don't need to hard code. Don't, we don't need to hard code things like logic for terms in the core module. Um, that's how the UI looks at the moment. It's basically the same as in Drupal 7. You get those patterns that you can fill out for each node type, for each language, for each node, node type, and so on. And you can also see the token UI embedded here. Um, this is a slide that's more oriented at developers. So in Drupal 7, you, you had to write a lot of code to integrate it with a new entity type. You had to write, implement different hooks. You had to call pass auto functions and define stuff. And in Drupal 8, it's building on top of fields and widgets. So in Drupal core, the pass user interface is now a field that has a widget. So we basically just replace that. And for the users where it doesn't have any integration in core, that's more or less all the code you need to integrate it. And then you get um, the, widget, the widget on the manage form display page. And you get that user interface where you can enter a manual alias or use the one that's generated for you. Um, I don't have many plans at the moment myself. Um, as I mentioned, there are the, there's the idea to merge Redirect and GlobeDirect together. Um, hopefully that will happen. It would be one less module you need to download and care about on every site. And as I mentioned, Kim Pepper is working on making, on converting passout to plugins and making it more flexible. Um, if you want to help, there are some known issues in core, for example, the language prefix stuff that I mentioned. Um, last time I talked about this topic, I had another core issue in here about um, pass aliases and how they change and how Contrib is able to react to changes. Um, there has been some improvements there yet, so I was able to remove that topic from this slide, which is nice. Um, Token API could use a lot of help in Drupal core. I'm not sure if it's still possible to improve that now that we will have the beta this week. If you want to help, submit pull requests for the GitHub projects or patches for what is on Drupal.org. You can also just use the time you have here to try it out, install it, experiment, and report bugs. And if you want to sprint on it on Friday or so, then get in contact with me. And I haven't worked on all those modules alone. Many other people are involved. Of course, Dave Wright, who wrote and maintains most of those modules in Drupal 7, and a number of other people that are porting the token module and other modules, and are helping out. Microphone. Any questions about the modules? Yeah, Boyan. So, how close are we to auto generating tokens from typed data? Because I really don't want to write any more token integrations anymore. Um, um, I'm not sure. I basically just made the existing approach in token module work for now. 
So it's not using type data yet, it's just using the existing field API. Um, I know that the rules guys are looking into making to token generation from type data work. There has been some approaches in Drupal core to make that work, but that didn't happen yet, unfortunately. So I'm kind of relying on the real rules team to improve the situation there. Okay, thank you. So, <laughs> next is a shared presentation, uh, Simple News, Miro and Ivan. So, hello, yes, Simple News, um, not, possibly not so, uh, popular as all the other modules. Hmm? It's just actually full. Ah, oh, that was that was not. Yes, it's like number ninety or something. Um, and actually, I got into charge of it from Eric uh, two and a half years ago. Um, and I'm happy to say that today, basically, my team is taking care of it. Especially, uh, Ivan finally joined us and helped us parting it because. Um, let's say last year, for instance, there was not too much activity around it. And for instance, there was also a module called newsletter that has been started, which seems now to be abandoned and finally uh, migrate to Simple News back again when our version of Drupal 8 is ready. Now, as said, I'm founder of MD Systems. Uh, luckily, we are working a lot of, uh, with the Drupal 8 stuff since starting this week and pushed a lot of these modules you've seen. Um, and as I said, this is Ivan Fuchs, actually a developer of one of our clients uh, who joined the team and helped us porting as a new contributor. Thank you. Okay, as Miro said, I did most of the porting we uh, started some months ago, um, which changed a little bit the order, because the first thing is the changes. So what changed from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. Um, we tried to use all the Drupal 8 pattern like the configuration, the entities, the fieldable entities and all that stuff. So um, the, uh, what was known until now, the, the categories, which is the newsletter itself, is now a configuration, a config entity. And uh, we used also the, the principles of the entity reference, so it's like uh, enlarged entity reference. We use this for the subscriptions and the issues. And also the, the blocks we changed uh, and we, we're using now there the uh, Drupal 8 plugin system. As you can he see here, it's a little uh, diagram where you know which, uh, what is a subscription, what is an issue. So uh, that's just for the overview. Um, here you see the, the block configuration uh, pop up for the moment because until now on D7 um, for a simple news uh, block you just enabled it on the newsletter itself so you had only this uh, one block for the newsletter or there was some uh, sum summarizing uh, block for all the newsletter. Um, now with the, the plugin system you can have as much blocks as you want, and you can al always select uh, for which newsletter you would like to uh, have this block, so you can activate one or n or how much, uh, however you want to. Um, the status of the project, um, we ported, I would say, most or about all the functionality that you had on D7. Um, in the first step, it was just a raw porting of what we had. Um, you have all the configuration of the newsletter, the settings, um, the UI. Uh, we did not yet do the views integration, so you have just simple listings at the moment. Um, the blocks were ported, as I said, with the plugins. The mail spool works. Um, the subscriber is now fieldable. We also did, uh, in the last few days, um, a colleague is working on uh, personalization, so he already did some uh, synchronization of the subscriber and the user, so like a first name, last name, this uh, stuff. And uh, there, 
sending and stop, uh, stopping of a newsletter is already working, so you can send around some default newsletters. Um, for those of uh, you who know Simple News are perhaps happy to l uh, read here stopping newsletter. Yes, we have now a stop button where you can stop sending your newsletter. At the moment it's just a rudimentary stop, stopping, uh, deleting the mails out of the spool and setting back the status, but uh, we will work on that too. Here is a little overview. As I said, it's just at the moment listing, no views integration of the newsletter itself. Here you can edit it and you see on top also the uh, settings tab. These are uh, uh, two examples. So indeed it's the same example of a subscription uh, block. Once uh, you're logged in, the other one is not. As you can see, you, can, you have there checkbox of, of different newsletters. Then you have the subscriber overview. Um, indeed, it's an overview of the uh, active subscriptions. That's a problem we are also working on because you don't really have an overview of all subscribers because when you unsubscribe somewhere and so you don't have an active subscription to something, you're not listed anywhere. So uh, we will try to separate these two things that we have a subscriber overview and a subscription overview that uh, it's, it's handled easier or it's you, you view it a uh, lot, lot better. Um, this, this is the subscriber edit form. As you can see, there are the, um, those fields, first name, last name, which are synchronized to, to the user, which it, uh, it depends on. So uh, this is, uh, yeah, I think yesterday it started working, so we're making progress in that. Um, that's the fieldable uh, subscriber. Uh, as I said, we used uh, also these principles and the subscriber is completely fieldable. You, you can put on whatever you want. Um, it, it makes it quite flexible. And also for the user synchro synchronization, which uh, the, all the fields that are put on a user can also be on a subscriber, so the synchronization works. Um, this is the newsletter issue overview. So the newsletter issue is uh, um, uh, the, the thing that is sent uh, regularly. Um, for the moment, we don't have any v, uh, VBOs or uh, filtering on that, as I said, also because of the view int views integration that is missing. But as you can see, um, the subscribers, uh, in D D7 we had the problem that indeed every issue of a newsletter that was sent showed the same number of subscriber number in this overview because it just was looking up how many are subscribed now, so mention this. Uh, we fixed also that, that you can see how many subscribers or how many sent newsletters were at this issue. So you can also um, see the evolution of uh, subscri subscriptions to a newsletter. Um, yes, <laughs> here you can see the stop sending button that you have on an issue. Um, and that's the same possibili possibilities and as in D7 where you can uh, send your newsletters, uh, send test uh, mails and all that stuff. And now we come to the plans and there I give the word back to you. Yes. Actually, I would have expected some applause for the stop sending button because <laughs> you can't imagine how many mails possibly we spams the whole world with simple news and uh, we really wanted to stop this issue. Um, same also with, with other discussions around the architecture. Um, this, we identified the concept of a subscriber as is seen basically, uh, subscriber is kind of similar to a user but it's not the real user that can log in but still he can kind of maintain his subscriptions. Uh, so basically there has, there's currently a little bit of discussion whether the subscriber as such should be separated and not basically really be a part of simple news uh, internally. Um, I don't know whether we will work on that really, but most importantly we want to improve the UI a bit. Uh, that personalization stuff was a huge demand in past already, so people uh, basically ended up in customizing, uh, writing custom code to add a uh, first name or a last name field to subscriptions. Uh, this pain is really over. So basically we have a solution that uh, is much more near to real life requirements. 
Um, and for instance, I have uh, really things that, that I'm uh, concerned about since uh, Drupal currently is really bad at doing its mail reputation. So basically most of the platforms are uh, sending emails to recipients that possibly bounce and no one is taking care of that. Um, this is not a simple news problem in my point of view. Um, and we want to work on that. Uh, we, uh, basically we start doing this and we will release, I don't know, some other modules, uh, components part of, uh, of simple news on its own. And sure, there is always a topic like give me statistics, provide uh, click uh, information on who actually clicked on links, opened it. Um, previous submodules might be ported, might be uh, uh, part of simple news in the future. Um, and finally, sure, we want to uh, provide examples through, uh, for instance, simply test me. Uh, one thing also, I basically, let's say, started to dream years ago, it's like best would be that every theme basically that uh, ships with, with Drupal you can use should also provide an HTML uh, mail theme. Um, we are far from that. It's still something uh, I, I want to basically get better with simple news uh, because it's, it was always a pain to ship a theme that finally works for your newsletters. And this is something we need to improve. And we sure can, uh, we need your help. Um, Ivan will continue. We will make this production ready by the start of next year. Uh, basically, Simple News can already be used. We will, we have some ideas where we continue to work, as, as I told you. But still, uh, basically, no one is currently taking care of the migrate path. Um, th all that personalization stuff with uh, there's, there's a ton of, of requirements that basically start once you have these fields in order to successfully deliver personalized emails. And uh, sure, all these ideas uh, uh, can yeah, need you to, to make it happen. Yes, that was it. Thanks a lot. Thank you both. Any questions? Simple news, sending mails. Good, okay, that's it, thanks. Okay, I guess we had all of them. So the only thing I can really say is, um, yes, so on Friday we have sprints. So if you're interested in helping in any of these modules or another module you wanna port, um, come to the sprints on Friday, even you, if you never worked before on any core or country modules, there will be um, help for, from the mentors. They will tell you how it works, how Git works, how you set up your local dev environment and all these things, and um, then you can help us. There is also an initiative to do, again, a Drupal country info website. And unfortunately, the old one that we had for Drupal 7 is now taken by an Asian um, um, domain taker, um, but there will probably be another domain which is not yet ready um, where sooner um, or later we'll see like an overview of all the updates um, of each module that you can really easily see. Is there already a stable version or not? So not like click around like crazy on these other bits. Yes, I hope that was interesting. As I said, it's, a, it, it was an, it's an experiment to see if this works, but we really hope that you got some information about uh, Drupal 8. Um, of country to know which modules are in which status and I wish you a really nice day. Enjoy DrupalCon. Thank you. <laughs>